you'll find vivid colors, varied textures, and more than enough to fill any artist's toolbox. Hello and welcome to Common Sense. I'm Mary Rose Abraham. Whether you're a professional artist or just like to doodle here and there, you're going to enjoy today's show. We're visiting a place that's chock full of every artist material you could think of. Family owned and operated, Walzers keeps its longtime Torrance business running with hard work and a little common sense. For the last 30 years, artists from all over the South Bay and beyond have been making their way to Walzers in Torrance. We're basically into what I would call art, office, and digital. We sell uh, many products and services for the fine art community, uh, some for the craft uh, people and offices, and a lot into the digital for photographers and graphic artists. Let's take a look at art first. Andre Alvarez is an animation artist and teacher. When students join his classes and begin creating characters, he directs them to Walzers for their materials. The first thing we have to do is, is sort of work out these design issues on paper. So the thing I try and um, guide them to is these sets here, these Prismacolor sets. Um, they usually come with, like I said, these little 12 packet things. For the more advanced students, I tend to kind of go with the the big 144. Oh, wow. You know. Pretty much every color in the world there. <laughs> <laughs> this set here, they come in these little stackers here. You kind of like link them together and they stack up pretty nicely. The thing I really try and push for is good traditional skills, you know? And to me, that's more important than, you know, for say, oh, let's try and find the newest program. Well, before you find the newest program, what can you do with this stuff? You know, that might be kind of interesting. This is, um, like I said, one of the more pricey um, items to buy. For more of the beginning students, I'd probably recommend like the 24 set here. You know, it's got, and it has all the colors listed here. The great thing about Prismacolor too is um, when you're working with characters, sometimes the characters are different sizes on the page. So you have this, this nice broad tip here where you can go in and just like lay down your color. And then you have a fine tip here where you can like, you know, just do the little details and stuff. And this is your personal choice of marker that you used as well? Absolutely. I, I don't use anything else. It's either this um, or Photoshop. But again, if I can, I'll use this rather than Photoshop. I mean, that's how effective this product is. And, and it's quite an investment. Without talking <laughs> about the price, it's kind of up there <laughs> for a student. Um, wh why would you have them invest in something like this? Well. If, if you're like me, you know, and art is your business, I mean, this is what I do for my living, this is my profession. When it comes to your tools and your supplies, I mean, it's like being a baseball player. You're going to want the best bat, you know, the best, you know, glove or, or anything, you know. You got to equip yourself with the best materials, you know. And honestly, when it comes to my tools and my craft, um, money's no object, you know. As long as it helps me get the job done, you know, I'll pay whatever it takes to get, you know, to get the best quality work. I use a paint tip brush. It's like a pen like this, and it has a um, tip similar to a paintbrush. Real easy for me to blend the colors in combination here. I also use a fine ink pen. If you see the detail in the art, the lines, all the pieces are outlined with that ink. And most of my colors are very bold and very bright. And so these are exceptional for me. I really enjoy using these pens. Of course, Jack has tons of these, and I'm appreciative of that. So you prefer these over the paint, regular yes, I paint? Do. Yes, I do. It's Just, do you have me. more control over each? Definitely. I'm sorry, watercolor looks like mud for me. Oil paints, forget that scene. I can't even get into that. So this is my, my true you know, adjustment to the art. I really enjoy that. But artists are not just using pencils, paint, and brushes for the fine detail on their canvases. Walzers also stocks specialty papers. You can go ahead and you can paint over it, and all these papers right here, anyway, are handmade. So that's 
what people come in asking for. Where are these coming from, the handmade papers? Um, these ones specifically, I'm not really sure, but we've got a lot of different ones. Some of them are Indian, some of them are Japanese and such. Um, and more for like the watercolor paper style, there's this right here, mm -hmm. where this stuff actually deteriorates once you put water on top of it. Really? So when you paint over it, then it'll go ahead and it'll dissolve away, and then you have this type of pattern on there. Okay. okay. Patty Pickles and Thelma Music are using specialty papers as part of an art installation for the children's area of Harbor UCLA Hospital. This paper comes in 40 by 60 and it's really hard to get anywhere. I don't even know of another place that sells it locally. So we uh, had to take several 40 by 60 sheets of paper and cut them, rip them up to make the size of these pieces and uh, that was most helpful. Walzers also sells the Epson um, watercolor print paper and this is the paper that we use to make the prints which is archival and the inks are archival and they should last I think they last about 80 years so <laughs> that should be long enough. That should, yeah. <laughs> And, and how about the materials that you use to actually do the painting itself? Um, most of this is watercolor. Some of it is ink. As you can see the outlines here, this is uh, ink pens that we've used. Some acrylics. And Thelma has some uh, collage, some fiber from papers in hers, along with inks and watercolor paints. I have a new project. It's going to be a portrait. Okay. And it's got to be bigger than 16 by 20. Yeah. And, I, and it's going to be very realistic, so I'll need something I can get a lot of detail. Okay. In. Like a portrait grade? Yeah. Portrait yeah. Grade. Okay. okay. What you got? We have... Along with many sizes of canvas, Walzers also has a variety paints. of oh, one of the artist's standard tools. For acrylic or oil. These are the easels that we carry. We have both traditional easels as well as field sketch easels. Um, traditional easels, for the most part, we carry Maybe. They're an Italian company. Um, most people prefer the Maybe because they're a nice, sturdier wood. And they're a lot heavier, but they're, they will last a lot longer. Um, the other easels that we have are called sketch box easels. They're used on the field outside when you paint. Um, for the most part, people prefer these because they have, um, they can carry them around with them. They can carry around pretty much all the supplies that they would use when they go out painting. And with these easels, they're a lot smaller, but they have more features to them. Sketch, sketch box easels usually come with a palette, as well as storage compartments for your paints and supplies. Um, some have the steel or aluminum inside, some have wood. It's just a preference of whichever one you'd want. Then you can get into the bigger ones, which cost more, but you can carry more with you. These kind have much more storage and a bigger palette. So if you're doing more painting and you need more paint to cover, you can get the bigger one. Wazer stocks more than 35,000 items in its 22,000 square foot facility. But this family owned business had a much different beginning. He was an engineer and I was a, a teacher. I became a teacher. and. Uh, we combined our, our interests, photography and art, and he decided after he left mobile that uh, he would like to try entrepreneurship, and so he said, let's combine everything and, be, and uh, work as a, a unit and, and see what we can come up with. So we came up with the art consignment store, and, uh, and then we uh, uh, went on to develop it into what it is today. As in the original store, Janie Walzer still creates and sells her artwork. During its three decades, Walzer's had three different locations, all on Hawthorne Boulevard. Its recent move to a fourth location was to a quieter industrial park. It's kind of interesting because it's more of a community atmosphere in this industrial park than on Hawthorne. On Hawthorne, it was a busy street. It's basically a high state highway and cars rushing back and forth. Here, there's a lot of industry people that are working and they take walks, lunchtime, take breaks and wander on in. So it's, it's uh, just a nicer atmosphere. I like it a lot more than the other place, actually. It seems I'm more of an industrial person. It seems more of an industrial artist shop. Customers may like the new location, but many are still trying to find their way here. 
Jack Walzer says the move was a business interruption since some customers even thought Walzer's <coughs> went out of business when they didn't see the store in Hawthorne any longer. In the industrial park near Torrance Memorial Hospital, Walzer's is the only retail facility, so it operates with a conditional use permit. But Jack Walzer believes the future will bring more retail mixed with industry. When we come back from a short break, we'll explore the office products and digital services at Walzer's. Here's a brain teaser before we go. In 1498, The Apocalypse was the first book entirely produced by an artist. Which one of these artists published it? A. Sandra Botticelli, B. Albert Durer, or C. Leonardo da Vinci? Don't go away, we'll be right back with the answer. Good evening. Follow me, please. Imagine what America would be like today if Martin Luther King never had a dream. Help keep the dream alive. To find out more about the Martin Luther King Memorial in Washington, D.C., call or log on now. Welcome back. Here's that brain teaser again. In 1498, The Apocalypse was the first book entirely produced by an artist. Which one of these artists published it? A. Sandro Botticelli, B. Albrecht Durer, or C, Leonardo da Vinci? The correct answer is B. Durer was a printmaker, draftsman, painter, and designer from Germany. We've been visiting Walzers, a torn staple for artists. Keeping it going for 30 years means paying attention to what customers want and constantly evolving. There's different challenges, different times. Not as much competition as the economy probably is a bigger challenge for most people, most businesses. Um, and when I look back, I mean, there's many, many businesses that are not here today that, that used to be. I mean, even large companies are not uh, uh, always staying around as, as they used to be. One sure way to stay competitive are Walzer's prices. They reflect a discount of 10 to 50 percent off retail. The store also stocks a variety of each type of product. I mean, the students don't need to buy the $300 brush, but the professional appreciates and can make use of it, so they would purchase it. Nadia, I'm coming up. Okay. Keeping the shelves stocked means constantly evaluating new products from different vendors, including products for the home or business office. More and more of Walzer's customers are graphic artists, relying on technology for their work. So Walzer specializes in the high-end photographic and graphic art area such as special photographic paper. You get a real nice soft look depending on what your artwork is. Real vivid colors. But you can see how if an artist were to reproduce their artwork that you get a real natural look. It's not going to look like it just came out of a printer. You could put it in a frame and you know call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a real nice outcome from that. And is that a glossy type paper? This one is a real natural, soft, um, you can feel it. It's more of like a velvet finish. Oh, that's quite nice. Yeah. yeah. And they also have um, a natural, not such a bright white as the first one I showed you. Let me see if I can find a couple different ones here. This is the photo paper, which is a glossy finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels just like once you Looks develop just, the yeah, photos exactly. at the store, yeah. Exactly. It's a real nice outcome to be able to do it on your own, too. And here's an example of the canvas. So you can see if an artist prints onto the canvas, they're going to get something that looks like they printed right, or painted or, you know, whatnot, directly onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. so. Graphic artists also come to Walzers for its imaging services. Everything we do.